Thank you all for joining us this evening. We'll be starting our webinar shortly. I wanna welcome everybody for joining us. My name is Jacqueline Phyllis and I'm the Executive Director of the YMCA's Counseling Service. Tonight, we're thrilled to be partnering with Rank the Vote for this webinar series. For the past several years, the Y has been promoting civic participation as a way that people can strengthen their communities. The 2021 elections will have a tremendous impact on the future of New York City and the Y is committed to helping prepare our communities to take part. Trustworthy, nonpartisan information is essential to helping New Yorkers exercise their right to vote. In recent years, primary elections have played a huge role in determining who gets into office in New York City. New York is now using ranked choice voting for many city races in primary and special elections. This year, the primaries will take place on June 22nd, with early voting from June 12th to June 20th and we want voters to be informed and be ready. To tell you all about ranked choice voting, we have Evan Mastroniardi, sorry if I messed that up, Evan, from Rank the Vote New York City. Founded in 2019 to bring ranked choice voting to New York City, the organization now focuses on educating voters, candidates, and community groups on the changes to our local elections in 2021. Rank the Vote New York City is currently partnering with the Y to lead five webinars, including three in different languages on ranked choice voting. I encourage people to please use the Q&A function to submit questions if they come up. And I wanna thank Evan again so much for being here. Evan, I'm turning it over to you. Okay, thank you both. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, Gretchen, both for having me, allowing me to have this opportunity on behalf of Rank the Vote NYC to educate communities, communities in Staten Island, communities across New York City. Uh, I am a Bronx organizer, but I like to organize on behalf of everyone here to make sure that we will be engaged in this new process. So I'm going to share and begin the presentation which will be about 10, 15 minutes. And then I am very happy to answer any questions. So to begin, I'm going to reintroduce our organization. This is Rank to Vote NYC, and this is voter training. Let's do a quick recap. How did we get here? So in 2009, there was a costly runoff election for public advocate and controller. This prompted a debate prompted a debate because there was low turnout and it, it created an environment where people can elect representatives even though the majority of the community did not support that person. We also wanted more people being engaged. In 2010, Councilmember Gail Brewer, who is now the borough president, introduced the first idea for ranked choice bill. This went to a charter revision, almost took a full decade for this idea to be explored. 2019, we, New Yorkers, voted for this as a referendum. So if anyone ever asks you, well, how did we get this? You say, we chose it, New York chose it. And if you didn't want it, or if you wanna vote for referendums in the future, this is why civic engagement is important because changes do happen. And in 2021, this year, first RCV elections. So why? Conjunction of robust campaign finance, implementation term limits, diverse candidates, we don't want people splitting the vote, meaning that there's two people who maybe you would like to vote for, and then a third candidate comes in and gets the highest percentage because the two candidates who the people really would have preferred ended up splitting the top percentages. 
That doesn't happen anymore. And we'll get into that more later. But in the past, a candidate could have won with, let's say, 20% of the vote. That means the majority of the constituency of the community did not vote for that person. That's a plurality, not a majority, not a mandate. That's not what we want. So starting this year in primaries and special elections for city council, borough president, public advocate, comptroller, and mayor, you can rank your vote. Runoffs are eliminated and candidates now need 50% plus one of the vote or a majority to win. There are special instances where it's just the highest percent, but for the vast majority of cases where this has been implemented, there has always been a majority winner. Voters will now have the option to rank up to five candidates, including a rider. You don't have to rank all five, but your vote is more powerful if you do, and we'll get into that as well. Important dates, primary, June 22nd. Tell everybody you know, if they don't know there's election, they don't know when the election is, June 22nd, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Last day to register to vote, well, unfortunately it did pass. Last day to change your address though is tomorrow. So if you need to change your address and you're already registered to vote, it's time to get on it quick. Early voting runs from June 12th to June 20th. So that's also coming up. Now this is a beginning guide to what the ballot will look like. We'll get into a more detailed version later. But you see you have your candidates in your rows and in the columns you have the ranks. So it's one bubble per rank per column, one candidate per rank per column. You can't have multiple first choices and don't rank the same candidate for multiple ranks. A different candidate per ranking. It's the best way I think to explain it to people if you want to explain uh, how to fill out your ballot, which I believe is one of the most important things when we are explaining to our neighbors about ranked choice voting, how to fill in the ballot. But how do you look at the ballot? Well, first candidate, it can be the one you love. It could be the one that you just simply aligns with your in issues the most. And second choice, maybe it's someone who there's an issue or two that they don't align with but overall you think that they are uh, better than the rest of the candidates running. Third and fourth, fifth, it can be more candidates you tolerate. This is your strategy. This is your ranking. You can use them as you want. You, it can be candidates you all tolerate and there's a small margin in between, or maybe there's a huge margin. Maybe there's someone that you really want to win but doesn't have the best chance of winning. And you can put them first knowing safely that if they get eliminated, your second vote will absolutely matter. And maybe that can be for somebody who you think has a better chance of winning. But how you use your vote is up to you. Now I'm gonna zoom out and I'm going to play this video from Rank the Vote NYC on how ranked choice voting works in a very familiar setting, our bodegas. Hi, I'm Mahir, and welcome to my bodega. As you may know, New York City has a new way to vote in special and primary elections. So, how does ranked choice voting work? The next time you vote in a city election, instead of choosing just one candidate, you can rank them all from your first choice to your fifth. Here's how it works. Let's say my bodega is picking its featured snack of the month. So many choices! Which one should I feature? This customer ranks Parker Pretzels as her top favorite. She also ranks her second choice, Mr. Chips, third choice, Chichi Chicharrones, fourth choice, Gladys Gummies, and fifth choice, Poppy Popcorn. Other customers rank their choices as well. If Parker Pretzels is the favorite choice and wins more than 50% of all the first ranked choices, then Parker Pretzels is the winner and is featured as the snack of the month. However, if no snack gets more than 50%, then the least popular snack is eliminated. Sorry, Figgy Bars. The remaining second ranked choices from customers who chose Figgy Bars are redistributed. So if customers chose Chips and Chicharrones as second choices, then those two snacks receive additional votes. The new totals are counted and the process repeats until there's a winner of the final two. Congrats, Poppy Popcorn, you're the bodega snack favorite. Back in the real world, before it's time to vote for humans, visit rankthevotenyc.org for more information. Thank you, New York City.
for voting, and for making these special and primary elections your elections. Okay, thank you for watching our video. We now are going to move on to how the ballot will actually look. Uh, one second, there we go. So this is more like what you will be seeing on election day. You'll have different squares representing different positions, but there'll be four of the five that are ranked positions. So it's likely that a fifth position may be on the back on a separate paper. Remember to always turn over your ballot because there will be five ranked choice positions. This one has mayor, public advocate, controller, council member. There is also borough president, which will also be ranked choice voting. In addition to that, you will likely have papers that are state representative. So this is not on a state level. Ranked choice voting is for primaries and special elections in municipal level positions, not state level positions, which does happen to include district attorney. District attorney will not be ranked choice voting. So again, let's look into how you fill in this ballot. You need to go one bubble per column and per row. The way I look at it, one candidate per rank. You can't have a candidate for all the ranks, the same candidate for all the ranks, and you can't have multiple candidates for the same rank. It's one candidate per rank, a different candidate per rank. So counting rounds. This is a new subject. We didn't have counting rounds before. Counting rounds will be what kicks in if no candidate receives enough first choice votes, meaning no candidate gets a majority of the first place votes. No candidate gets a majority of the first place votes, it goes to rounds. If someone does get a majority of the first place votes, what will likely happen on election night is someone will declare victory, the media may declare it. It won't be certified yet because we need at least a week for the BOE, the Board of Elections, to open absentee ballots, affidavit ballots, and even longer for military ballots. So if at one point it becomes mathematically impossible, we will have officially a winner. But until that point, everything is undeclared unofficial until all the ballots are counted. Now, let's say someone does not have that, does not have majority on election night. It's the same process. The BOE is not certifying an election because ballots need to be opened. The only difference being in this case, the ballots being open can affect the candidate until they get a majority. Now the rounds will begin. So if a candidate got 40% on election night, they can't declare victory yet because we need to wait for all of the votes to be counted, which can include votes that put other candidates ahead of them. So we'll go into that more or the, also the votes that are open could certify their victory down the line, but I'm going to show a mock election example of how that process will happen if somebody does not get a majority outright after the first place votes are counted. Why should voters use their rankings? More choice, more power. Like I said, your first place uh, choice gets eliminated, then your second place choice becomes your vote. Second place choice gets eliminated, your third place choice becomes your vote. So you continue to impact the race, even as the candidates you choose are eliminated from the race. The more you fill in, the more you can impact the race if it goes to rounds. You can vote your conscience without worrying about wasting your vote. Like I said, maybe you know someone who's running, maybe there's someone who you really like aligns with your issues the most, but they just don't have a great chance of winning. You could still put them first. And the second they get eliminated, then your second place vote becomes your vote. So that way you can still help somebody's campaign while still choosing somebody who maybe is still way above, way a better choice to you than someone else that's running. Essentially, you won't help to elect someone you really don't want to be on your ballot or in that position. Ranking a second, third place candidate will not affect your first because like I said, those choices only become your vote when the other is eliminated. The second becomes your vote if the first is eliminated. The third becomes your vote if the second is eliminated. So if you pick someone first who ends up being the winner, your second place vote never gets utilized. But if you pick someone and that person gets eliminated, then your second place vote gets utilized. 
and so on. Here's some frequently asked questions. How many candidates do I rank? You could rank up to five candidates, but it's your choice. As I said though, the fewer you rank, the less power your ballot has. Can I rank a candidate more than once? We've heard this before. Do not rank the same candidate one through five. It does absolutely nothing to help their chances. Ranking a candidate one through five is the same as ranking them once. So, because the second they get eliminated, they get eliminated from all, all, all things. And multiple rankings are not like multiple votes. Multiple rankings would be like giving you an overvote, which the BOE would never allow. An overvote is also if you were to rank multiple candidates for the same rank, as in multiple firsts, multiple seconds, et cetera. That will not allow the machines, the BOE will not allow that because it is an overvote. So again, rank a different candidate per rank. Does it hurt your candidates? Like I said, the rankings do not impact each other. One is eliminated, the next becomes your vote and so on. So let's say you only have a little bit of time. Here's the core message. Who, what, when, where, why. So what, rank choice voting, vote up to five people. When, now, who? Mayor, controller, public advocate, borough president, city council. Where, only municipal elections, only here in NYC. And why, you won't be wasting your vote because anybody who you pick who gets eliminated, then it just goes to your next vote. It wasn't a waste. You won't and because of that, you won't accidentally help someone else to win and you won't split the vote. And the idea behind ranked choice voting is someone will be elected with a majority. This is some ways to contact us. Ranked to Vote NYC has all these materials, including the presentations. And you could also email us, follow us on Instagram. Uh, my email is bronxorganizer at rankthevotenyc.org as well, if you want to contact me directly. And now I am going to stop share and I am going to share a mock election. What you're going to see here is a mock election that we did for Black History Month on who would you like to see on the $100 bill? Okay, so you have here, which historic black leader would you like to see on the $100 bill? So these rounds are going as as they were, but I am going to slow it down and I am going to show you step by step, round one and so on. Round one, you see Shirley Chisholm is in first place. So again, this is the same process that will happen when we vote for any candidate for elected office. Shirley Chisholm is in first place, Bayard Russell's in last. What does this mean? Shirley Chisholm is not the winner yet. Why? Because she has not reached the majority. The majority is this line to the right. This line to the right here represents who, what, what the, the threshold that the candidate needs to pass to win. Bayard Rustin, he only has 15 and he is at the bottom. So when we go to the next round, he's eliminated. But what happens when we eliminate Bayard Rustin? His votes get redistributed. Minus 15, that 15, then gets redistributed to the remaining candidates. So what you'll see here is certain candidates increase. You see Frederick Douglass, oh, this is new. It actually has the pluses. So you could see how much each candidate gained by the previous candidate being eliminated. So anybody who chose Bayard Rustin first, now their second place choice becomes their vote. And those second place choices are being distributed across the remaining candidates in the race. So someone who picked him first, pick Shirley Chisholm second. In fact, five people pick Bayard Rustin first and Shirley Chisholm second. So when he got eliminated, the votes went to her and so on. And we're going to continue this process until there's two left. Now, a question I got, I'm gonna stop at three, but a question I got is, well, what if someone wins before? What if it only takes three rounds? Then we do have a winner, but we will continue the rounds to see the true intention of the voters. Because maybe someone won, initially with round three, 51% of the vote. That's great, they won. But by round 
seven, eight, until those two candidates left, they actually have like 70% of the vote. That might happen, that might not. But the point is to be able to show the true intent of the voters. So we go from here where we have John Lewis, Martin Luther King and Shirley Chisholm, that's three. No one has a majority yet. We're gonna go to the next round. Everyone who voted John Lewis first is about to have their votes redistributed. And enough had it distributed to Shirley Chisholm that she now passed the threshold to win and won the election. She has a majority of the votes. So I'm going to stop my share there and open up for any questions. I'm also going to charge my computer, make sure it doesn't die during this. Um, but I am open to questions now. So Evan, it doesn't look like we have any questions um, so far this evening. Thank you again, Evan, for all the information you've shared with us tonight. And thank you to everyone who was able to join us for your interest in ranked choice voting. We really hope that we can count on you to make a voting plan for June, June 22nd, just a reminder. And please help to spread the word to others about ranked choice voting and the importance of the primaries on June 22nd. Um, for more information on ranked choice voting and for other voting resources, or to see a recording of tonight's webinar, please visit us at ymcanyc.org backslash events backslash voting. And you can also visit Rank the, Rank the Vote New York City at rankthevotenyc.org. Thank you again to everybody. And Evan, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me.